Hey folks, I just wanted to jump on very quickly at the start of this video. And I suppose, first of all, I'll leave a little disclaimer. I have permission, both from a wonderful director and from Jackie herself, to show you a little snippet from a, a video that Jackie actually uses in her talks in school. I just want to give a, a quick warning that this is a very uncomfortable watch. It's, I'm crying telling you, it's heartbreaking. But I believe it's one of those situations where we all need to see this. So just a little warning, the next minute and a half or so will be uncomfortable to maybe younger viewers to maybe advert their eyes from it, but to the rest of us to just drink in the incredible and amazing Jackie Fox. I really hope you enjoy this. It's been an incredible honor to have this lady in my presence and uh, welcome to the first coffee with Gary with the amazing Jackie Fox. I left the house at 20 past three and I got home at 20 past four. I, wa I walked in and my Nicole's 14 year old brother was right beside me and right in front of us off the banisters. Um, she, ha she had got the stepladder and um, the dog's lead and she was hanging from the banisters into the hallway the minute you walk in and I, tr I was trying to lift her up to, uh, by the legs I was lifting her up to try and get the the weight off her neck I screamed that loud Lee didn't know what to do and I said take her down just take her down she was lying on the floor I was begging her I was saying please call please just hold on don't go Foxy <laughs> Look at Foxy, Foxy, Foxy sitting in my kitchen. What are the fucking chances? Uh, hello everyone, welcome to uh, the very first Jackie Fox, the very first Coffee with Gary. Look, I've started this upy, you know, um, but the folks at home would have just watched probably. <sighs> Little disclaimer, me and Jackie are going to cry today, aren't we, but yeah. it's going to happen, so don't worry about it. All right, we're okay with it. So uh, don't feel uncomfortable, rock it with us. And if you feel like crying yourself, guys, let it out because you've just watched one of the hardest minutes of your life, I'm sure. So you know what? Shut up, Gary. <laughs> Jackie Fox, thank you so much for coming to my kitchen and having a coffee with me. Thank you. Although she drinks tea. For <laughs> huh? fuck's sake. Weak milky tea. Milky tea, weak tea. And nanny cup of tea. <laughs> um, so... Thank you, first of all, and thanks to Jerry. Is that the name of the chap who made the, the yeah, video? Jerry thanks so much, Jerry yeah. Walsh, uh, for letting me show that snippet. I think you use that in your school, and we'll get to that your talks. But uh, Jackie, for I suppose for anyone who's been living under a rock for the last few years, uh, if you'd just like to introduce yourself, and maybe if you if you feel comfortable, just tell us a little bit about your story. Um, I'm Jackie Fox. Go away! <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, um, my story is, I just want to tell you about my daughter Nicole. Uh, Nicole took her own life at the age of 21. Um, I have two boys at home and Nicole is my only little girl, my only daughter. Um, you know, she, it, what happened was over jealousy, just over pure jealousy. And um, this one girl in particular wanted um, Nicole's best friend, um, who was a boy, and the only way she could get closer to this boy was to make friends with Nicole, and that's what she did. But when she realised that um, the boy didn't want to be with her and, and didn't want anything to, to do with her, she took it out on Nicole. Um, it started off with little things, um, you know, little things that you kind of say, oh, well, you know, Nicole used to just put it over her head and forget about it. But then things start to, to, to get worse. One, when I started off with two girls, one of them has since moved away to England and has admitted to me that what I'm going to tell you is just true jealousy only, just just because she was jealous of what Nicole had. Um, and this girl, this main girl, couldn't bully Nicole on her own because she was a coward. She had to form a different group and she, she had one or two, and, but the group got bigger and bigger. So um, there, there would have been about, got to about 25 people against Nicole who, who'd done nothing on her. She was so gentle and kind, you know, she, all she wanted to do was go out 
and have um, have a, a laugh, a, a dance, a few drinks. That's all she ever wanted to do, but um, uh, that did that didn't happen. And um, Nicole, uh, when she'd be in the nightclub, she would uh, go out to the smoking area with her friend, and these people started to put cigarette butts out into her, onto her skin and they'd stick the cigarette butt on her arms or her legs and one of the girls threw the, the cigarette onto Nicole's foot and stuck it out onto her but they all said, oh sorry, that was an accident, I didn't mean that. And another thing that happened, Nicole was, there was a flight of metal stairs in the nightclub and one of them got Nicole by the hair and bounced her down each and every one of the steps and she got to the end. And Nicole was only my height, she was only five foot and she, she was only a little thing, you know, and she'd get up on the, do on the dance floor and she'd be dancing and these people, no matter where she danced on the dance floor, they would come and dance beside her, but they would give her an elbow in the face or an elbow in the chest and knock her onto the floor and go, oh, sorry, that was an accident, um, we didn't see you there, you know, and um, one time Nicole was coming out of the, the bathroom in the nightclub and one of the girls pushed her so hard into the corner of the table, they dislocated her hip and she was brought straight to the hospital. They, another two girls made friends with her um, but Nicole didn't realise that they were friends with the main girl that started this. So one night Nicole was up in the bedroom, in her bedroom and she was getting ready with these two girls and um, one of them who each have a child of their own um, said, will we curl your hair, will we tongs your hair and Nicole said yeah, but when they, they put the, the tongs up at the highest heat and and start laughing and they stuck the, the tongs to her skin and they gave her five or six inch scar on her arm. And Nicole took an overdose in 2015. I didn't know that, Jackie. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't know that part of your story, sir. And I, I thought that was a worse nightmare to find your daughter. Um, but it was only the beginning of what was going to happen. And she, I rushed her to the hospital and she, she, we spent, myself and Nicole spent four nights in, in the hospital. But, I remember the doctor saying to her, um, do you regret it? And Nicole said, yeah. And the doctor says, oh, well, that's good. And she goes, no, I regret it didn't work. And when you hear something like that, when you hear your daughter saying like that, the, the fear that just runs through you. Um, when Nicole got out of the hospital, she was sent to camps. And um, she, she cried and cried in front of the man that, that was talking to her. And um, he said that, it's all part of life and it's just the phase you're going through. I'm sorry, but being physically abused. There's nothing like that. to be sorry for today, yeah. Jackie. Can I just stop you there? Yeah. You've nothing to be sorry for. You speak from the heart. This mm. is an RTA. You say what you want. This is my YouTube channel. Yeah. You say what you want. Being physically abused like that is not part of people's lives or a phase no. anyone should have to go through. And um, they did get, they, they, they heard about Nicole's overdose and I thought that would have stopped it, you know, um, but they, the main girl said, oh, Nicole took an overdose because of me. And then the other girl said, no, it wasn't, it was because of me. And it was because of me. And it was like a trophy they were claiming, like, of who made Nicole feel like that she couldn't live past another day. Um, these weren't happy with, with the physical abuse. They took it online then. And Which I think is so much more dangerous in many ways, Jack, isn't it? It becomes private then. It, it does, and, and when they take online, it gets into your head more than what physical abuse would. It just gets deeper and deeper into your head, and so hard to, to find, to, to get back out of that. Um, on on the, the, the online, you know, the, you have all the apps like Snapchat and WhatsApp, and they, they made a group in WhatsApp, and obviously Nicole wasn't invited into the group, and they would share everything around, but they put a video up on WhatsApp, and it was, a, a video of a girl's, a girl whose face was blurred out and that girl was with three men but they put it all around saying that girl was Nicole and I still touch my stomach and, you know and, and they also with with the likes of Snapchat you can put things up for 10 seconds and it disappears so and stuff but every, every day they told her to, to hang yourself and um, everyone hates you you'd be better off to hit. no one wants you here and you know, your wrist and everything. And they also sent her videos of a noose on how to hang, on, on how to hang yourself. Um, you know, from, from my bubbly, lively, funny, beautiful, outgoing daughter, I could see her, I could see her um, slipping away to her. 
She was losing her confidence, she was losing that smile, that massive big smile that she always had when growing up. She stayed in her room a lot then and... Um, what just, isn't that the, the danger that we just talked about because cigarette butts on your fucking feet and things like that can be seen with your eyes but poor Nicole, and I won't call her poor Nicole, she wouldn't appreciate that, I apologise for that but Nicole did what a lot of these poor students that follow me as well do in this moment where she kept it to herself, she kept the, the bullying, the online stuff, the stuff you can't see so damn distracting, isn't it? Yeah, and it just, it does the effects it has, has on you. It just, it just, once it gets into your head, it just, it just gets so deep. You can't, it's so hard to get back out when Nicole was in, 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 um, in a room one night. Uh, she, she had got her, her nails and she had dug them so deep into her skin, so deep into her legs, so deep into her belly that she bled. And the most, Devastating time every night. Nicole was sitting at the end of my bed, or I'd be in the bed with her. We'd always talk, and she'd always say, Every night, she'd go, Night, ma'am, I love you. And I'd always go, Night, Coco Pops, I love you too. And then I'd hear her going into her room, and I'd hear her crying herself uh, asleep. And she'd always wake up the next morning feeling just as sad as she did the night before. And one, one time I went into a room and she said, Mum, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't take it. I don't want to be here anymore. But the only reason why I can't uh, kill myself is because, Mum, I don't want to leave you heartbroken. And that's the type of person the call was. She wasn't thinking of herself. She was thinking of, of how I would be without her because she was my best friend. She, she was a her and crying. She was you know, yeah, you know, and, and we did everything together. She was a mammy's girl, and I so proud of her. So proud. Of she her. has has the most incredible mother. To be able to talk at all, to be able to articulate words at all about what you've just shared with these amazing people, um, it shows strength beyond strength. Something that we've fallen out about. We have fallen out once or twice, me and you, haven't we? No, he's he's fallen out with me. <laughs> I think it's so important for so many people to see this, to hear this. And I know it's, you've said this so many times, you've told this story so many times on, on different media and platform. Uh, we speak about the responsibilities you and I have with school talks and how students follow us. And I know students are going to watch this video. And I want them to see the devastation that can be caused from bullying that can be caused from not reaching out for help at the right time. And the devastation what suicide does to those that are left behind. Honest to God, I, I, I don't know how you're going to tell me that something now. And this next week, guys, I just don't get this. I don't know how he did this, but it's fair to say that something lit a fucking fire on your arse. She's lovely arse, by the way. I'm going to edit that out. I'm going to keep it in, you know? <laughs> You went on what can only be called a crusade. And I've never been more... <laughs> I've, um, I've never been more proud and more honoured to sit in front of somebody who brought a fucking law into Ireland. <laughs> Some little woman, from, no, sorry to call you a little woman, a lady from uh, Clumbarkham, who took on the Irish government and won. Would you mind telling me what this is about? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, I don't want anyone. Uh, first of all, how I how I went about bringing the law in, um, I had to make a decision one night. Uh, well, every night I slept in cold bed, and this particular night I was that close to wanting to be with Nicole because I I was here, and my family and my boys were on this side, and Nicole was somewhere somewhere else where she shouldn't be. She should be with her mum, and. You thought the best thing to do was to go and see her? Because I needed to see her smile, I needed to hold her, I needed to hug her, I needed to tell her how much I love her. And, and, but, you know, I'm glad I didn't make that decision because yes, suicide is, is definitely not the right answer. And even though it might look that like I'm glad to be talking to you here today, but I am glad I'm here oh, today sure. and I'm making a difference. I don't want anyone else to 
to be a victim of these horrible, nasty people. And I don't want any other family going through the devastation. Which is why you went to took on the government, You took on the government. I did, and um, it was so hard because at the start they weren't listening to me. They just seen this little person coming in, and they were, and I did get snickers off them. Um, I'm not going to lie. Um, I wasn't really getting anywhere and the only I had to change that and this is where social media is, is great. You know, it has its great course, size, but it also has its really important dark to say that, Jackie. Size. Thanks for saying that. It's very important to say that. Yeah. You know, it can be great, but it was it's been given to the hands of idiots sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm be, sure when Mark Zuckerberg or whatever his name was created Facebook, he yeah. certainly didn't create it for hate. Mm. But because it was free to download and anyone can have it, if you have hate in your system, mm. isn't it a great L platform for a brave fucker sitting behind a computer screen mm. to have a go at you? Yeah. And, and the fact that then there's no legislation in, our, in, in oh, Ireland too. There wasn't. There wasn't, there is now, but there was nothing there to protect uh, vulnerable people, but it doesn't, it doesn't only affect vulnerable people, you can be the strongest will person in the world, and these people can still get into your head. Or, oh, you, 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 know, sp you spoke about in my second book where I got trolled online over my mum <sighs> after the late night show. Mm, I'd like to think I'm strong. Mm. Knocked me for fucking six, and I couldn't believe it. Mm. And I couldn't believe know, it. And they know that. Yeah. They know they can get into your heads, and that's that's. Sorry, the sorry for interrupting. Imagine, can you imagine? It was a quick one that way. Actually, apologise for interrupting. I know. Yeah, yeah. what's wrong with you? You don't recognise this guy. Sorry, please, 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 because I'm. I really want to hear this fight you took on. I, this I wasn't getting anywhere, so the only way I could get through it was to get through to the Irish people to to help me to back me up on it. Um, I did use social media. I, I spread the cold story around. I went on every um, on TV, radio station, newspaper, everywhere I could get get put out. And the amount of support that I got. Actually, um, we have a mutual friend who deserves a huge mention here, don't we, Mr. Noel Boyle? Oh, Mr. Noel Boyle, of course. I know there's many of you out there who might listen to his show. He does your head and get over it. He's a shock jock. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. Jackie. What's he like as a human? Oh, do you know, he is human. And that's that's the difference. And he turned he, up at one of your marches. He, he never went to a march, ever. in, in, in not, not with microphones and radios no, and cameras. He walked up. Yeah, he walked up. He walked up and had a chat with you. Yeah. With no fanfare. No, absolutely not. He He's wasn't there. He was there because You're a diamond wanted, boy then. Yeah, definitely. He was there because he wanted to be. Um, he's fantastic. He had and would, have, would have helped, I assume, in spreading your word. Oh, because this is what you needed. And this is why I'm proud to be Irish, by the way. Because mm. what are the Irish public like when they need them? Oh, do you know what? Niall Boylan especially, he, he shared it constantly. He was always sharing it and he's always kept in touch. And um, the Irish people, um, they shocked me because, not that, like, I was, I was never in this position to need um, a, a Irish people behind me. But when, when I got everyone, it was just like, I had um, a protest outside the Leinster House and... Um, that was great and all the media was there but I, the march that my boyle was at there was hundreds of people there and even people just doing their shopping and they were clapping as, as we were going by but they also joined wow. the end of the queue wow. as well and uh, the support but the share how, and the how did that make you feel jackie when you were standing say on o'connell street or wherever you were as i told you i'd cry every now and then i'm sorry as just a woman who I'm sorry, you keep saying just a woman, you're going to clap me across the face. I mean, you know I'm not fucking sexist, I'm the most unsexist man. Does it, does it get you? Know, yeah, she might be small if she's feisty. But just as this lady who has endured and suffered at the hands of fools and, and horrible people and has lost everything, and you're fighting and you're going with this, and then you're standing in, in your hometown and there's, there's people clapping, there's people joining. Could, could you give me and maybe the guys watching at home? What, what, was, what, was your, what were you thinking at that moment? Did you feel pride? Did you feel overwhelmed? It, felt, it made me feel like I wasn't on my own. And that was a huge difference. Because when I first started off, it was only me going, trying to take on these, the, the, the TDs and, and standing there watching people joining in, sharing everything. I just felt that I wasn't on my own, that, that people cared and they wanted to help. We're going to have to take a little break, folks, for you about Nagel. But what I will say, Going into the interlude of this one is, I don't think I've ever been more proud to be Irish. We're a tiny little dot in this country and this world, aren't we? And listen to that. You know, when it's needed and when we need each other, we're always there. Uh, we just need to take five minutes. Give us five seconds, okay? Just an hour there. 
a toilet break. Um, that gives me time to piss myself. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting to that. We were just speaking there about how this is incredibly strong. Although you don't like to refer to yourself as being strong, a woman who had lost everything decided to take on a nation. Sorry, to take on a government. Uh, we were talking about the marches, how Noel turned up. Um, I know that you wanted, you just said to me off camera there that you wanted to thank everyone who turned up with their marches. So you wanted... Yeah, no, I wanted to send I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the, the support of everyone. And on, online that. as well, you were saying the amount of comments oh, and Oh, sharing, and, and it's, I didn't realise so many people are going through the yeah. same. Um, it's not the shopping thing. thing. Yeah, so many people could identify In your my world, story. At, at this time and at that time, I, I'm always saying this to people, like, fuck everyone else, you know, because that was your, it's your cross, it was your problem. And it shows, and we're going to get to all of this, how much empathy you have for other people and how much love you have for other people. And that's the reason why I wanted you here today, we'll get to that. But anyway, you take on a government. Yeah. You literally <laughs> rock up to the doll, this tiny little lady, <laughs> kick its fucking gate and say, oi, I want to tell you something, you better fucking listen. Who was the first TD that kind of listened to you and decided, hang on, just, you need help and I'm going to try and help you? The, the main one, James Brown was, was fantastic. Right. I had a meeting in, in, the, in the AV room and, okay. um, you know, they all, it, at the end of it, they stood up and said, instead of all working in separate parties, can we all work together? And um, James Brown, I did give him horrible abuse at the, the, no, not horrible abuse, but I did, I told him what was on my mind at the first protest. And I didn't think I'd ever see him again. But he turned up in the, in that meeting, and yeah. he's been not not only TD, he's been a friend now. Um, this is the a, main, a lovely part of your story. Oh, you he, do you know he's he's a good guy. The main the main person that could change this that took me on and cared was Brendan Helen from Labour. I can't just say I was calling him Brian Downing. <laughs> Brian Downing is our big brother, isn't he? Yeah. Jesus Christ, I know my apologies. Yeah, he's Sorry, lovely. yeah, and he is Brendan, a wonderful man. Uh, he is. And Brendan Howland, um, he, he took me on. I remember um, sitting in his office uh, one, one day, myself and my friend, and we cried, but I spilled out everything. And I said to him, there's two things, there's two things that I want, and one is a law. And pass so other uh, people don't go through what we're going through, or or the family what we're going through now. And the other thing was, I have to ha give Nicole a legacy. Nicole has to be mentioned. This in the law. this was the most important factor for you, and that's okay to say that. Mm. The secondary thing for you was to help everybody else. It's not on your shoulders to save everybody else, but yet you did. We will get to that. But you, you you you. I think it's beautifully honest. That the main drive you had was to get Nicole's legacy. To to have her name forever yeah. and ever there. Yeah. And that's what pushed, drove yeah. the whole. Yeah. So I think that's beautiful honesty in that moment. You are so glad that this is gonna help other people, mm. but it doesn't change a fucking thing for you. No, it does it's a huge it, it is a I love huge. that honesty, Jackie Fox. Thank you so much for saying that. Yes. I think that's beautiful honesty. I think it's beautiful honesty. Mm. Keep going. I didn't want Nicole ever to be forgotten. And I said to my mum while I was fighting that, I'll make sure that she didn't die just because of these jealous people. I made sure that she was never going to be forgotten and that she was going to make a difference. And um, not me, not me, the one going in marching and stuff now, not me. It's Nicole's name. Coco's name is the one that everyone will know. Not not mine. And um, I I just I never wanted her to be forgotten. So um that was that was huge to, to so happen. an incredible moment that happened then i mean i think it's fair to say it was a, a three-year battle um ups downs left choice i know that you had so much help from brendan and from other guys and you'd have great days and bad days mm. and then you had a shit day and if you don't mind me bringing you to that shit day was when i was going to go and get my hair cut and rang me and you said i'm not going to call it coco's law I, I, I felt my own world coming crashing down and could only imagine what you were feeling. A lot of people wouldn't agree with what I did next, but I was losing you, pal. So I did what I had to do. And I was horrible to her. And I would have lost you as a friend. And I would have took that on the chin. But I knew you, I knew you were gonna give up. I was horrible to her. I said, come on, give up. Come on, that's the fucking girl, yeah? Well done. And I'd, I'd love you to tell him what you said, but I got to follow to yourself. 
Yeah, I was, I was, I was so upset and I was, I was afraid, I was scared that all the campaigning I did and that, that I could be just whipped away in a second. And, um, yeah, Gary was. <laughs> it was and, a method to my madness. Yeah, there, there was, but he hung, he hung up on me and I, I just said, you arsehole. And I said, I am never, ever going to answer the phone to him again. He's done, I'm never going to pick up the phone to him again. So what I did then was, I said, right, I'll show him, I affect that. That's and, what I want yeah, to do. Yeah, I know. And I said, well, fuck that, I'm, I'm going to show, I'm going to prove it. Yeah, Together. and I got on, I rang Brendan Helen and I said, what the hell? I rang March for Justice, I rang the, the people You were that, amazing, that right, March for Justice oh, for just Do you know what? Yeah. You know, they, they, they fantastic. Um, and within sec within minutes, I had Brendan held and I had Martin Justice. I had Zoom meetings organised. You're welcome. I had everything. All, all because of this <laughs> asshole. <laughs> that I was never going to answer the phone to again. But you know what? It was it was the turning point because you, you did make me. Uh, do you know what? If, I, if, if you didn't hang up and, and, and be so hard on me, I would have just sat and cried. I, I didn't I'm, take any pleasure, and we talked about this mm, privately. But, but I wouldn't have. For anyone out there who thinks I'm an absolute prick, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Jackie no, and me I, talked about we both have a lot of yes people in our life that just agree with everything we say. Mm. And sure, that's no use to you. Mm. And I just didn't feel that me going, oh my god, that's terrible, Jackie, that's so sad, I was going to help her. I'm on top of that, and I'm not afraid to admit this to you. I thought I was going to lose her. So I didn't want that. So, so I, 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 I just felt that Enough about me. Tell me about Miss McAdee. This, this is the bit. That I know I've personal insight into this and I'm fascinated and I really want you guys to hear this. Mm. So what can I just do a timeline for you here? Yeah. We've talked about Coco's Law being the main reason that fucking name was your drive, right? And then incredibly that you are you are glad you're not, you're not a machine, you are glad that it's gonna help other people and well done. Mm. You talked about kicking on the knocking on the gates of Lens House and saying whatever, listen up to me, and then we talked about these TDs that have jumped on and helped. I also marched for justice and all the Irish public and how everyone shared and helped you as well. Mm. Then they get told right at the 11th hour, when Gary Cunningham was an arsehole to you, <laughs> that no, 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 the law's been passed. Mm. It's going to be called section 25. Actually, what is this section, Jackie, do you know? Is there, is there the, a section? The they actually, law? Yeah. Oh, it's too long. It's, it's a big one, it's a big yeah, one, isn't it? So in other words, yeah, what you fought for was about to be called yeah. Blake Neff and Blake Neff. That no one that, that no one remember. Are meant fuck all about yeah. coal. Yeah. At this time, our, our, our Minister for Justice was uh, what we can both now agree is a fantastic lady with yeah. the name of Miss Helen McAtee. Yeah. And I think, am I right in saying that Miss Helen McAtee asked you for me? Yeah, I, I said after I got off the phone, after calling you an arsehole, um, I actually um, recorded a video that uh, Helen McAtee was on Facebook and I recorded a video and um, I sent her this message on Messenger. And I did say to her that if you do this to me after me campaigning, me campaigning for Nicole's name, for Nicole's legacy, if you do that to me, that you are going to put the final nails in my coffin because I, I, I oh, felt like yeah. I couldn't keep Nicole here, that I let her down and I wasn't going to let her down and this, I was not going to let her down. Jackie, I need to stop you there. Mm -hmm. Jackie, there's a, there's a bill. Four people, sorry. I've got to say the other people that are watching. I was going to say hundreds, and then like, Gary, who the fuck do you think you are? There's people watching this now that are screaming, screaming at the screen. It's not your fault, Jenny. Moving on. Go. So you're in. I sent her the, you sent her the, video. the video, and she she uh, texted me back straight away, and wow. she said, um, Can I ring you after work? And I said, Okay. But then that day, she, she got her secretary to ring me and said, um, Actually, I want a, a meeting with you. And wow. yeah, and straight away, because of you, straight away again, I got on to March for Justice. I got on, I, I and we had Zoom meetings, we had to prepare everything. And um, this was 10 days before everything, like all the, all the ministers, everyone was calling the Cocos all, all the way up. And 10 days before, Helen McEntee was taking Nicole out of everything, taking Coco out of everything. And um, I did go in and um, to the meeting with her. She was in trouble that week and everyone was saying she was the ice queen and stuff. Yeah, and I was that, yeah. saying, how am I going to, to melt this ice queen? And um, I, I thought I'm going to have a battle on my hands here. It was a Tuesday. And the reason I know that is I can't say why, 
but there's a very special lady who I hope is watching this. We sent her a little video a minute ago, and that's Miss Vinita Wilson. Hey, Vinita. I was heading out to her that day, mm. and you rang me. Mm. <laughs> and I remember saying to you, just look at her, Jackie, just, just look her in the eye. Just make eye contact. And when you get that eye contact, don't break it. When we went in, this is amazing. she was very staring looking and real meant business, you know. But that, that week she did also announce that she was pregnant. Um, so I what I did was when I went into the meeting I brought in photographs of Nicole. And Helen McIntyre was sitting uh, where you were and um, I laid the photographs out on the table and the fourth one was a baby scan. And I said to her, this is where you are at the moment. This this is what what you know this is your stage. This is your stage. Your, your child. The yeah. next, the next one, I it was a picture of Nicole's Christmas, and then the next one was a picture of Nicole's communion, and then the last one, a picture that I never seen, or will never ever look at, was a picture of Nicole in her cuff, and I said, "This is where you are now." And this is where I am. And I said, "This is where I am." And I said, "Do you want to end up? Do you want to be in the same position?" that I am in. Um, in Helen McEntee had a loss in her family. Her, her dad uh, took his own life due to online bullying, so she had got that connection as well, you know. And um, that ice queen, the, that period that I thought was such an ice queen, um, broke. And she cried a, a, new, like a number of times in that meeting. I think that's so refreshing to hear that. Yeah. We, we see these politicians and they're so one dimensional sometimes. And yeah, no. It's so powerful to hear that. At the, at the very end of the meeting, um, I had um, two guys in with me, um, Trevor and Finbar uh, from Act for Justice, and they were talking to, she had all her legal team, you know. And it's, it's like, it's like the, it's trees, the three musketeers <laughs> and the fucking, the nation's army. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's real David and Goliath stuff, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you know, and you, 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 you think that, you. that you're, that they're higher than you, that they're born, they know more, whatever. Uh, uh, that's well, I, I, I say that to you. Yeah. I say you're shite inside yeah. myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. When the two, two lads were talking to the rest of the team, myself and Helen McEntee, there wasn't a sound between us. We just looked at each other for, and it seemed for ages, and we, we locked eyes, we didn't even move, and she just nodded her head, and I just said, thank you. Didn't know what she was going to give me, didn't know oh, what she was going nice. to do, but I knew she was on me. Take a deep breath. Can you please tell these ninjas? First of all, I think it's fair to say if you had a fanfare, well, you can throw in a fanfare bit of music now. We have a law passed in this country that's called. Go, uh, it's, it's, Don't mind that. Yeah, it can be referred to as. Yeah, it's Coco's Law. Um, it is known as Coco's Law. You can use the other language. I hope you're clapping. I hope you're in your fucking sitting room, in your work job, on the bus, yup, yup, like that, right? But I don't think Helen McAtee was, Miss Helen McAtee was finished with you there, was she? She gave you Coco's Law. What else did she give you? She gave me Nicole a, a, a memorandum. I, did, I didn't bring okay. the memorandum with me. Um, Nicole has her own uh, memorandum in the law um, to honour her name, and they said, and um, to, to honour her, her mother um, for, fight, for, for fighting the law. Um, and um, her name, yeah, Nicole Fox. Um, and it, at the end of it, it says, this law can also be referred to as Coco's law. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I could nearly end the video there on a fucking high, like. She's also in the, the Irish <laughs> statute books. And um, when, when President Lincoln signed it, Lauren, she's in the Irish statute books forever, <laughs> long after everyone's gone. Forever? Gone. Yeah. Forever? Yeah. You, you did exactly mm. what you said you were going to do. Mm. And then Helen McAdee gave you the cake mm. and, and then put loads of stuff on the top of it. She's also when uh, anyone that's going to college, that's going to be going to college, it's Coco's Law is going to be in the school curriculum where everyone will learn um, Coco's Law and Webwise is making a book um, for schools um, about Coco's Law. It's, let's, let's talk about what we do right really quickly. I've taken it upon myself to, to help Jackie in any way I can and we wreck our heads a lot. But I've also always... Jackie... Jackie needs someone to agree with her sometimes. A lot of the time, actually. Typical bloody woman. God, I'm pretty sexist today. What the fuck's come on with me? I don't know. I love women. That's
that's even sexist, isn't it? <laughs> there's people have watched this segment right up to now, even though they know the story, they wouldn't know everything about it. There's this sort of empowerment. But then you go home, tag off, and you climb into your bed with Nicole's pajamas on the right. Or a house called that house house called, that we fell in the ring. You talk to Lee, your son, your beautiful son. What's your other son's name? Mm -hmm. Dan. Yeah. And, and, and you, Lee, and Dan still don't have a call. And I think that's very important for people to realise that. You help, uh, uh, you have set in motion the apprehension and the, the prevention of online trolling and bullying. This young woman from, from Dhaka, this lady from Dhaka, right? You have put in place a, a system that will protect the vulnerable online. You have done all this to keep your child's legacy and her name alive forever, and you've done all of that. Yeah. It doesn't change a fucking thing no. for you. Yeah. And people need to realise that sometimes. Yeah. Now, Jackie Fox, I'm interrupting you. Because I'm about to tell the camera why you're actually here today. And this is so risky. And this is so fucking nerve wracking. And believe it or not, this is why Jackie's nervous. It's not because of what she's just done. What she's just done, I can tell you now, has taken strength that I've never witnessed. And it's a very, very real thing to be near this energy right now. I love this woman. And I've been following her from anonymously for so long. And the only reason that I reached out when we spoke is because I put her in my last book as a real person and I asked her permission to do that. And I did that because I gave that book away for free. And I've always told you, if that book had been published, I wouldn't have put you in it because I would never want to make money off your choice then. Me and Jackie became really close very quickly and I took it upon myself to be there for you. And I'm there for you every day. That, that's it. Don't worry about that, right? I know a different side to you, Jackie Fox. I know the funny one. I know the mad one, she's a fucking head case. So I, when I did this coffee with Gary, how could we not talk about what we just spoke about? But I had an idea. Quick disclaimer for you guys, uh, my microphone's broke this morning, we had no light, and now the camera keeps fucking stopping. But I know what I was saying there was that I know this different side to Jackie Fox, I know a completely different side to her. We've just spoke about how you've done all this, how you got Coco's Law in, and everybody who knows Jackie knows that person. And when I asked Jackie to do this over the last couple of days, and in fact, Jackie's here since 10 o'clock this morning, it's now nearly two o'clock. So we've only started a video a while ago. We had to talk a lot and it was quite emotional. But if I'm doing something I know is a bit risky, but what I'm doing is I want to try and show all of you amazing guys that follow me, the Jackie I know as well, the behind the scenes Jackie, the private Jackie. Because guys, let me tell you something about her. She's fucking hilarious. She's mad. She's a slaggy little fuck. Um, she's so much love and care and kindness. So the pace of this video is about to change. And I asked Jackie permission for this and it's not, you know it's not about, you know, wanting to talk about Nicole. I'm her biggest fan, outside of your family. I adore her. Yeah. It's about me wanting to show the world. The world? Who do I think I am? It's about me wanting to show me ma. <laughs> 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 and maybe we put her. And Fitza, Fitza, she was having the Fitza this morning. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's, he, he really, he's a really big fan of yours, you know. He, he, as, a, as, a, as a father himself, he, he gets it, you know. But I wanted to try and show everyone this jacket that I'm going to show you now. So I, I know that, you know, I know you said that I helped you, right? And, and I, I appreciate that, but I don't feel that I did anything that I wouldn't do for anyone I love. And I love you, Jackie. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Uh, I followed you anonymously for so long. And then I reached out and put you in the book. Blah, blah, blah. And we talked about that. Uh, and I thank you for telling me I help you. But I, I, I don't think I do. I just... No, a hundred percent. You're right what you said about yes people in my life. And a lot of people don't want to upset me. And you don't have that fear at all. <laughs> <laughs> don't I just scare me? <laughs> oh, don't say that. Without, without that pushing. <laughs> she bought me this. Quirky genius. <laughs> without that pushing that uh, pushing that you gave me, um, it's just you know I would have been back in in January when I lost my home. And um, I not I hadn't I hadn't got it in me. I existed and um, not lived. 
and I only existed to bring in the law. I didn't know any anything else. I I want to be I want to be happy. I want to be the person. I'll never be the person I used to be, but I don't want to be this person. But it, it, it's you that's bringing me out through this, and um, you believe in me, and um, you, you know even though I wreck your head and you still you still come back and. You, you well, bring it's all right, you know, okay, relax, you, I don't get embarrassed, you're fucking shite, like, you know, turn over. If anyone, anyone that has Gary Cunningham in their corner will never, ever fail, you know, they, they, they'll they always, they'll always pull through. Right, what okay, Gary? job done, Foxy, well done. You know, I could, I could say so much more. Please don't. <laughs> I'm well, meant to be fucking strong in this one, pal. I'm meant to be the interviewer. You, you the notions is what I have, isn't it? The world is watching. <laughs> I'm the interviewer. What a fucking shy bag. That shy bag saved my life, and it's still continuing to to walk with me and 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 make. Not only do I believe in him and what 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 he does, but he believes in me and he's making me Jesus. believe in myself. Right. Okay. Okay. That I have something to do. Yeah. Mother of the divine, Jesus, Jesus Christ, is this emotional or what? Right, so what I wanted to do, Jacqueline. Sorry, that's not being moved. Jackie. <laughs> Good call it Jacqueline, yeah. Um, thank you for that. I can't believe how uncomfortable I got there. And I just want to explain that to you, that it's not fucking about me, man, it's about you. But my God, uh, I just literally turned that camera off and was only shortly wearing the face off you. <laughs> I mean, it was just, I hope the life forever. And she's tiny, lads. She's tiny. <laughs> Jackie, I know that's going to go for this. Okay. I want to try and show the world a difference for the Jackie Fox, right? So, in the top of my mind, I was like, how do you fucking start this? <laughs> and I just knew that, Jackie, like, something tells me you are fucking wild when you were younger, right? And I don't know what it is. And I know that you, you say Nicole's mini me. <laughs> and she's not that Nicole was wild, but Nicole was. Go crack, prankster maybe. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the top question that comes to my mind, right? And this is what I want to see that people see this side of Jackie Fox, right? Um, yeah, I'll try and embarrass you a little as well, right? But can you tell me, like, can you remember, right, the first time we got grounded by a man and uh, what was that over? What, what did you do? Um, well, first of all, I was grounded half my childhood. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, I did. You know, I always say I'm a, I was a good kid. You know, I was, but I know my mum and dad and my brothers and sisters would have been different. <laughs> they wouldn't me, yeah, no, okay, no, okay. definitely, <laughs> definitely not agree. But um, yeah, you know, I did the things that, that I didn't do anything bad or malicious or anything, and um, but I did drink a lot um, <laughs> when I was 14. <laughs> yeah, um, when I was 14, yeah, um, you know, we, we'd sneak the drink out of the houses or whatever, or we'd scrape up money and, and get someone to go in and get the drink for us, the usual, but um, I don't know, I, I, I'm I a shy drinker. <laughs> and even now, I, I like to... You drink one bottle of Blue Wicked, am I right? <laughs> yeah, Give it over you, will you? I'm okay. I know I'm a recovered alcoholic, but come on, mate. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm... There's nothing I'm, in this I'm, anymore. I don't know you know. She doesn't coffee. even have a fucking table. Coffee, coffee. coffee. coffee day with, with Gary. Jesus Christ, she doesn't drink fucking coffee. And, it's a, it's a ah. So you're, you're caught in, yeah. you're out there scoring a few drinks. Oh yeah, and... Would well, it be fair to say you were pissed? Oh, absolutely. So you were just grounded for being drunk, was it? No, um, oh. <laughs> when I, I'd go in and I'd be falling all over the place and I, I went in one day and I bounced into the telly. <laughs> the telly? And, yeah, and it, I knocked it over. Oh my god. But, and then you had all those moments where you think you're great with your friends, like, oh, you're well able to handle your drink, and then you puke all over. <laughs> and then my mum always had to sneak me in um, so my dad, dad wouldn't catch me, and she'd have to get me up the stairs and dress me and get me into bed. And I'm like, oh, I'm get sick, you know what I mean? But a lot of the times there's a, a window in the land, and, and when you get out of the window, it leads you onto the garage. I used to sneak out. The, the window in the land and, and I've been gone off for ages thinking it was great but then after a little while I turned around with my dad Jacqueline <laughs> and that's when you call me well, Jacqueline well I call you Jacqueline that sounded like sense then I apologise rem it reminds me brings you right back yeah, to that my dad only called me that when I was in trouble oh Which Jackie was, I mean was like again <laughs> just thank you it's so refreshing and this is what I get on the phone boys when I'm talking to her yes we talk about Nicole all the time every day mm. 
But we also talk about now we don't talk about this because this is new to me. <laughs> but we talk about fun stuff. Yeah. Actually, I remember uh, leads me on to my next thing because I was always fascinated and, and one of my biggest passions in life, probably besides life, is music. Um, <laughs> as you know, and uh, I think we were getting to know each other a little bit. And I asked her, I know you're lucky to tell you about now. So, what music are you into? This is really cool. Noel Cunningham, I hope you're listening. Who are you listen? Who do you listen? Who do you love? Not, not, not who you said, but anyway. <laughs> no, we'll get to that in a minute, right? Four quid and four months here. So, but who do you listen to? Right, I, I could, didn't, couldn't believe this. Okay, I, I, first of all, I hate the music that's in today. It's just horrendous. <laughs> we're so, we're so old folky. Yeah, it's that yeah. music, Jackie. And it's that music. All that rapping that the boys <laughs> play, and it just does my head in. And, um, no, I'm, I'm real 80s, 80s music. I loved Madness. I was a real tomboy. Um, You're in the barrister. UB40 of the day? Oh, UB40. Madness wow. UB40. I like Bob Marley as well. Let me tell you something, folks. If it could go wrong this morning, it went wrong this morning. So don't worry about the edits. So what we were talking about there was the music in Madness, UB40, Noel Cunningham. And then he said the 80s as well. You love the 80s. Uh, not the Osmonds that I said you were into. I said she was into the fucking Osmonds. I asked her, are you mad about the Osmonds? So I put 90 years on her. <laughs> but I think we got, I got a snapshot from uh, your grounding when you were young and banging into things, my God. I got this snapshot that um, you were a little bit wild, a little bit mad like that. And that also, uh, I think Nicole had a bit of a kind of a wild, not a wild side, but... I, 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 I a <laughs> And I've asked your permission for this, guys. I, I know what's coming, but... Uh, would you please tell these wonderful ninjas, all six of them, <laughs> about um, Tinder and Nicole, please, what they uh, do is? Yeah, Nicole, um, she, al she always wanted me to be happy and um, I split up, I had a, I broke up from a marriage and I didn't want to be with anyone. I, I, of course. The atmosphere lifted completely out of, the, uh, out of the house, you know, and yeah. we were, I was enjoying my kids. All I wanted to be was with my kids and I was happy with that. Um, but Nicole wasn't happy with, with me being on my own. She just she wanted me to be happy. She wanted me to meet someone. And, so she and took to her own initiative. And yeah, to she did, and she she uh, went ahead and uh, downloaded Tinder <laughs> without me knowing, and she was swiping by. I'm sure she was going. Yep, yep. Yeah, damn it! I love it, dude. But she was pressing the heart or whatever you press on it, and I was getting notifications. <laughs> and stuff, and I was going, eh? What? Job. <laughs> like, what? And she, she oh confessed to me and she, she told me so we did sit down beside each other and I go, you can get that off. <laughs> get that off straight back. No, I'm not doing that. And then um, she goes, but look man, what, what do you think of him? And I go, like, mm, well. <laughs> he's okay. And, and, and she pressed the thing, like, you know, to, to Grecian, or if I didn't like him, she'd swipe. And then I said, don't, just get, get rid of that. But, um, I actually don't know. It, no, it's different for She probably didn't even. Know. I didn't even. <laughs> There's still uh, some man out there waiting yeah, for you to get back to. No. Um, you know, I think I think what's wonderful, Jackie, is um, today has been about uh, exploring a different side to you. Uh, the camera keeps cutting out. We've had so many problems, but we don't care, do we? No. Um, she's very patient. You know, we've we've obviously dealt with the story that everyone knows about you. And then we took it upon ourselves to try and shine a light on. This Jackie that I know and love, and I just want to say at this moment, you're a fucking rock star. And the way that you're doing this today, I know you were terrified. She was more afraid today to talk about Jackie Fox than she was to talk about the saddest thing in her life. And I think that gives you a huge snapshot into how incredible this lady is. You wouldn't just mind telling the folks at home about uh, the man who lived across the road from you, the single guy, Nicole again. What a legend. Yeah, and um, oh, he's like, in case he is watching, he's a lovely he is man. A, of course, he's a lovely man. <laughs> um, a lot older than me as well, and uh, he used to um, come over and say, Do you want me to cut the grass for you and stuff? Do you be able to cut the I grass? I love that line. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use that. But I never even, uh, that didn't even dawn on me, do you know? But, um, and I go, Yeah, grand or whatever, like, and he'd be cutting the grass. But then he'd be doing other, other stuff as well. But then um, Nicole said, Man, would you not go out with No. But when he did come, he come over and ask me out, and I said, I was stuttering. I didn't know what to say. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going out with someone, even though it wasn't. And uh, he said, oh, well, you know, if it ever finishes, uh, you know, if we ever break up, you know, uh, we go out for dinner. I'm like, yeah. And so in my head, I was going, <laughs> <laughs> 
what Nicole was, was saying, would you not, ma'am, would you not, would you not? And I, and I thought, no. And at this stage, all the neighbours, all, all the people around knew that he was asking me out. And you, you could see if he co comes across the road to cut my grass. Uh, I'll cut, you know, I need to fix your pipes. They'd be, <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be like, they're like flare pots in the window. Like, you know, the torn the, quitters. The, 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 the torn quitters. Yeah. What the fuck's a torn the quitter? Torn <laughs> So this is this is just so wonderful, uh, Jackie. Something that uh, I'd like to say, because um, this is all about finding out about the other side of Jackie Fox. Uh, Jackie, would it be fair to say that uh, if I was to make you laugh quite a lot now, that there's every chance that you piss yourself? <laughs> so, uh, fun fact about Jacqueline: Jackie literally can piss herself when she laughs. She literally pisses herself laughing, and I love you for having the fucking balls to say, this is the real Jackie Fox today. You piss yourself I, laughing. I did the, the, the proper definition of piss yourself laughing. <laughs> yes, I feel like I'm going to now. <laughs> All right, Jackie. Jackie, look, we're coming towards the end of this incredible morning, the day that I spent with you. God love her, she's here fucking half the day. You know, what I want to say, Jackie, is uh, I want to talk about something very important, actually. Something that me and Jackie share in common, besides the fact that we both lost a daughter, is that we go into schools and we do talks. And I don't want you to give anything away, but for any teacher that doesn't realise who you are, can you just explain to me that you go into schools and you give a talk now, Jackie, and this is what you kind of do. You go all over the country, Jackie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, yeah I've, I've been everywhere, but I've still so much, so much talks to do. Um, it's not only in schools, it's schools, colleges, U clubs, U reach, community centres. No name club. No name club. Great clubs. Yeah. Um, football clubs. Wow. Um, I, 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 wow, that's amazing. It's a huge one. Yeah, on Brilliant. one of the Zooms I had, um, oh, a load of football members. How do you find the Zoom talks? I found them very, there's not enough it's, connection, isn't there? The energy, you yeah. need to, to be able to talk to people face to face, you know, to, to, to know what they're feeling or, or you know, the, the Zoom, it's, it's, it was okay. It, 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 and it worked during the yeah, pandemics and did. everything, but, but it's not the same as being in the room. I've been in the room with this lady today, and for such a small little lady, stop saying fucking little lady, I sound such a condescending prick, I apologise. <laughs> for such a small and high woman, you're a force of nature, Jackie Fox. Mm -hmm. um, so please, if you're a teacher out there, a uh, principal, a youth reach worker, a football club owner, anything at all, uh, I'll have Jackie's details will all be in the comments or in the section below. Uh, you can find her. Do do yourself, your school and the students a favour and reach out to this woman and have her come and talk. And I just want to say something, and Caroline from No Name, I know you're watching as well. It takes life out of these talks, don't they? Oh, it just... It drains, drains it, trust me. It. Um, we, because I was doing the Zoom, it was it was a bit easier because when you got off... Bedroom, you need and I need the jammer and... From here, from here, down on your head, you can stay. I don't know about the difference, but when you're finished, you're, you're still in your, your safety zone, you're still in your home, do you know? But going to talks after um, doing a few talks this week, even uh, it's yeah. it's just. And stand there with book, which is just. I can't even I know, really do yeah, that. I, know, I always do that, but yeah. it, it, no, it does. It just drains the life where you can't even talk no. when you're finished. Um, and then it's not that, say, if I go to Cork or Kerry, it's the, the driving down. Course. You're doing the two talks from there. Home, then. And then driving home, and it's endless. And um, Google no. Maps, I get lost. Anyway, come on, <laughs> so it's, it's an extended drive. I think drive. we were talking about this, me and Jackie are the male and female and Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, we just were klutzes and we forget oh, things. Um, and I think as well, Jackie, I mean, I get drained from doing my talks and I'm worried about them. And that's, I take on board with, I feel these, some of these students are going through. Your draining is coming from speaking about your daughter. It's um, reliving. You have to be there exactly. every single time. And I'm sure you'll all agree, mm. again, Jackie Fox, that takes strength beyond strength in my eyes. Jackie will not admit to herself that she's strong, and I understand that. But you've got to listen to Joe Public, all of us. That we, we, we see the strength that you don't see. Um, and I think this is a lovely way to wrap up today, Jackie. I'm gonna press stop and we're gonna do this again, right? But there's something that I need to say to you, if that's okay, so just give me one second. The first thing I wanna say again, Jackie Fox, Jacqueline Foxy, is thank you. I didn't think this was going to happen with this, but I want to say thank you for telling us the truth about Nicole's story. I want you to thank you for sharing an insight into the fight that you wouldn't give up on. I 
can you want? It's so Dave and Goliath, it's unbelievable. You've wrote yourself into history, Jackie, and you've also wrote your child into history. And you said to me that all you ever wanted to do was to do right by your children. I know that Lee and Dane would be behind me now going, Gar, she's great. And I know Nicole is smiling down on me now with my daughter Megan and saying, Ma, you smashed it. Because you did, Jackie Fox, you smashed it. And every single solitary day you continue to smash it. So all I want to say is this. Thank you for your honesty. But thank you for dropping the wall. Dropping the veil a little bit and letting us in. It's because I know you're going to agree with me. Isn't she fucking great? Isn't she some energy? I think she's afraid to show that sometimes. And that's what we're working on together. And you help me so much. You need to know that. You help me so much. So I hope that today, shut up you. I hope that today, <laughs> oh my God, when you look back on this video, and people will hopefully, when you share it, will share comments, that you drink them in. Because I think people are going to be so happy, the people who follow you, who have followed your story and supported your story, and who love you, and who think you're great, have seen this 14 year old, they've heard this 14 year old knocking the fucking telly over, the woman who literally pisses herself <laughs> laughing, the girl whose daughter and mother of bombs was so strong that her daughter put her on Tinder. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is the coolest story in the world. Thank you so much for doing that, Jackie. Thank you for being my friend. <laughs> Thank you for doing coffee with Gary. <laughs> Thank you for doing coffee with Gary with me. And I wish you nothing but a beautiful life of happiness. And I'm telling you now, Jackie Fox, you're going to be fucking happy if it fucking kills me. So with all that said... Can I just say something really, really yeah, quick as well? I, I don't... I believe... When when the cold snuck off on me, I do call her my little sneak off her, but when she snuck off... Um, yeah, some people you expect to be around, and they're not. But I think me... that I, I, I know I definitely meet people for a reason uh, in your life, and you're, you're one of them. And I don't... I know for a fact that I could not have done any of this without Nicole. And even in your life, I know Megan um, has guided you through and put you on the path that you're, you're here right now. And to have... To have each other now. To have Nicole and Megan... Um, looking after us. Looking after us. We couldn't well, ask for... Well, quite lucky, aren't we? Yeah. She spoils me books, uh, Jackie. Mm. I, 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 mm. I sometimes I hold you, so I write a chapter and I say, I wonder what Megan would have yeah. thought of that. You we, know? Couldn't, we couldn't ask for two better no. angels to, to guide us where, where we are I believe you want me to sign fucking books. I yeah. have, do you know what? I, and I only said this to him a few minutes ago. I Actually, do you know what? I'll, I'll sign them off the camera. But, right, I, um, I, yeah, of joys of joys and life after joy. Um, do you know what? Everyone, and I mean a lot of my friends have bought them already. Everyone, everyone has to, to read these. They're plug away, girl! Plug they're, away! They're funny, they're inspirational, they're sad, and um, there's a bit of everything in it, but a whole lot of things. That chocolate fits on his head, didn't he? What? I imagine well, I write a book about <laughs> fucking my life and it all becomes about bleeding him. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I think, uh, you know, I think. I think it was a, a, a game changer for you, a life changer yeah. for you. But yeah. as I said, to have Megan beside you, guiding you on the right track um, of what you're doing now for people is just, you know, I you put me up there, you know, <laughs> but you're higher. What you are you put doing me, right now? You, you, you know, the, the two of us walk off each other and it's just such an inspiration. So, these books definitely. Thank you. I'm just mindful of time. I'm so sorry about that because I don't want that fucking thing to run out us again. But. I'm going to leave it with this and I hope this helps you. This isn't for them, this is for me and you. To go through what you've been through, to be still sitting here and, 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 and fighting the good fight, because it's a fight every day for you and another, and to have the capacity to say such beautiful things about another human being when you have the right to tell everyone to fuck off and leave you alone. And leave the fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. To find the capacity inside to talk so beautifully about another human being is why I wanted to do this video today. Because I know that, I know that's you. And I know you're funny, and I know you're so kind and so caring. So that's what today was about. She was so nervous, you know it is. Not about Nicole. You're good at talking about Nicole, if that makes sense. Mm. You're shit at talking about yourself. Mm. After today, that's gonna change. Jackie Fox, thank you so much for doing coffee with Gary. And I really, really hope that everyone at home enjoyed it.
Jackie, say good boy. Goodbye, and thank you so much. Jacqueline! <laughs> Go and give me a hug. <laughs> Do it in the front. You have to go on your knees. Look, so the camera can see it. It's well ahead. I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much. I love you.